Hey everyone out there, welcome back to my channel. I'm Patrick and we're going to talk about some of the big news today. There's a lot of news going on. It's Wednesday the 23rd. I hope you guys are all getting ready for the holidays out there. So some of the big news that's going on today, guys, is we've seen Ripple, XRP, the, the, SEC, the SEC is doing a big suit against them right now. And there's a lot of uh, people thinking that this might be the end of Ripple. And then another huge thing is uh, MicroStrategy, the guy, Michael Saylor, who just bought a billion dollars in... Bitcoin has basically came out with a huge interview today saying that if big, he thinks that Bitcoin's going to appreciate at 100% and that companies including Tesla, Apple, Google, and Amazon are going to get into this because they, they're going to be sitting on all this cash and if they don't, then they're not going to stay solvent or relevant anymore. So this is big news, guys. I want to play some of this for you. And like just getting into it right now, I'm going to play this video just so you guys can stay up to date on the news. So check this out. Let me start it over. as institutional investors continue to pile in. Our next guest is a big proponent of Bitcoin. His company, MicroStrategy, has bought more than a billion dollars worth in 2020, and the stock is climbing right alongside the crypto, both up about 125% over the past three months. He even tried to convince Elon Musk to convert Tesla's balance sheet. He just did like an Elon Musk too, yeah. Bitcoin in a Twitter he just talked to him on Twitter. Musk would be doing shareholders a favor. Us now to discuss micro strategy and its strategy this guy's huge market. guys Michael Saylor Michael Saylor Mr. Saylor welcome good to have you with us happy to be here he bought a billion uh, dollars he has a billion dollars in Bitcoin such an interesting cat you, you had an exchange with him uh, and he uh, about Bitcoin and he said yeah, you said yes I purchased over 1.3 billion in Bitcoin in the past months and be happy to share my playbook with you offline has he followed up you know I, I can't speak about my conversations with him but uh, what I can say is that Tesla, Apple, and Google all have the same problem. They're sitting on huge piles of cash, and they're dissipating shareholder wealth at a rate of 15 to 20% a year times that cash. They need to turn that from a liability into an asset. And the best way to do it is convert it into Bitcoin, because Bitcoin's going up more than 100% a year. Cash is debasing at 15% a year. But people yep. put money in cash because it is stable and uh, uh, presumably, uh, even though you're, you're quite right that cash can, can lose value in, uh, in real terms, but Bitcoin can be a very valuable asset, a very volatile asset as valuable. well. Right? Yeah, it can be valuable. You know, it used <laughs> to be, but it's looking much better by the month. Bitcoin's the world's first engineered safe haven asset, and it's running on the world's first digital monetary network. I mean, everybody in the world, every institutional investor is looking for a safe haven, and they're all losing faith in gold, and they're losing faith in, in sovereign debt as a safe haven. Uh, so Bitcoin is sitting at the right place at the right time. It's very appealing to anybody that wants to preserve shareholder wealth. Hi, Michael. Rahel Solomon here. Question. So you say it's you know, becoming less volatile, and yet I wonder, do you think that Bitcoin still has a credibility issue? And if so... Um, how do we move past that, or investors such as yourself move past that? You know, if you'd asked me about Bitcoin in February, I would have said, Bit what? In mm -hmm. March, everything changed. And since March, Big we've had Paul Tudor Jones and Stanley Druckenmiller, and we've had Bill Miller, and we've had Rick Reeder, and we've had Guggenheim. Guggenheim, and we've had Skybridge, we've had MicroStrategy, we've had Square. We've got an avalanche of billion-dollar entities Cash coming out. into this space. And they're not here to speculate on leverage uh, with an uncorrelated asset. They're here because they want the world's best safe haven investment-grade treasury reserve asset. So as the institutions buy Bitcoin, its volatility changes and the characteristics of the asset class are maturing. I would. I just want to come back and, and poke a little bit at the at the safe haven thought there, because it's not very long ago that this was an asset that went up to twenty thousand dollars, and then it was back down at three thousand dollars. And if you were looking for it to be a store of value, um, that would that would be a store of unvalue. I mean, so so you, you, you make the argument now that because a lot of people are coming into it, the, the dynamics of the marketplace have changed, that, that it's not going to be prone to those kinds of dramatic sell-offs. Is that, am I understanding you correctly? Look, it's, it's, it's totally different investors, it's institutions, major mm -hmm. corporations. 
it's there's no leverage. The, the use case is different. The use case is to buy a treasury reserve asset and hold it for a decade. Hold Massive it for a long time. Mutual life insurance company is buying it. Why do you want a long duration asset? Bitcoin is engineered synthetic pharmaceutical grade gold. It's all of the benefits of gold, but you can't make any more of it. It's got none of the hangover of gold. And so it's appealing to people that want to store their money away for many, many, many years. There's nothing better. How much money, I mean, if you mind me asking, I hate to be ask rude questions. And my mother told me it's not polite to ask people how much they've made. But, but how much have you made in Bitcoin this year as it's risen and risen and risen? North of five hundred million dollars. Well, that's that, that's that's more than I make. So let me let me ask you another. <laughs> I'd uh, buy another an island. Question: Do you worry at all that MicroStrategy becomes somehow known as a Bitcoin play as opposed to a play that really revolves around your business intelligence operations and and what you do, business analytics and so forth? Do do you? This is the important part right here, guys. To pay attention. That has been so good to you as you move uh, more and more of your balance sheet into Bitcoin. You know, when companies started plugging into the internet, I don't think they worried that they would become uh, just internet companies. Um, I'm not worried about being the Bitcoin company. I think that the best strategy for enhancing shareholder value is to plug into the world's best first monetary network, and that's Bitcoin. You see Square doing it. You see PayPal do it. We've done it. If Bitcoin continues to appreciate at 100 percent plus a year, and there's no reason to think it won't, as long as uh, plus. central banks keep printing money, and as long as the tech technical dynamics continue, and the stimulus is appreciating at that rate, then Apple, Amazon, Google, and Facebook are all going to have to plug their their products into it, and any company with large cash balances is going to have to convert their treasury into Bitcoin if they wish to stay solvent and relevant. So we just view ourselves as being early pioneers in this space. Uh, otherwise, I think it's utterly rational and other people are following. Fascinating. Michael, before we let you go, we do want to ask you one final question. We do know that at least one firm is investigating your company. For All right. So they're saying basically that it's entirely rational and the early pioneers coming in to Bitcoin and doing this. They're saying that everyone's going to follow suit so they don't lose their huge cash reserves. That's pretty big news, guys, if you, if you look right there. Um, we also have, you know, with this, with that 100% appreciation, here's an article that just came out saying that Bitcoin dominance hits one-year peak amid XRP sell-off as 24K briefly returns. So they're saying that even though like this uh, SEC, SEC news came out with a uh, ripple, and basically that means that they're trying to do a lawsuit against them, saying that they've been doing selling out as a security. And so there's a lot of, um, I think it's just FOMO, like, you know, this is going to drive the price down and then it'll come back up. And then people, it'll just boost the price back up. But they're saying that Bitcoin kept the volatility coming on December 23rd as a dive on 22,800 sparked a lightning fast rally to classic $24,000 resistance. Bitcoin dominates, dominance hits highest since late 2019. So there's still a lot of dominant dominance going on here with Bitcoin. Uh, that's really good. It's saying that. Let me let me pull up the one thing. Historically, we've been making a top structure in December, after which we have a wonder wonderful first quarter for altcoins. So basically, yeah, all so altcoin flounders in another trying December. So the altcoins are kind of going down as Bitcoin is going up. So that's pretty big news right there, guys. There's also a couple other things I wanted to share with you. Let me see if I can pull it up right here. Bitwise dumps XRP investment and mid lawsuit against Ripple. They're saying that uh, basically some of these some of these uh, exchanges and different people are going to start dumping Ripple because they're scared that they're going to lose their position um, with the SEC. Bitwise decision to liquidate its position in XRP was based on the consideration of new public information from SEC's complaint. And I, I kind of just took a look at the plant complaint, guys, and they're just labeling a bunch of things here about XRP. They're kind of going after uh, Brad Garlinghouse and uh, some of the founders of Ripple, saying that they've made these bill you know, made billions of dollars trying to sell their cash to and to help out their company. You know, whether that's true or not, 
I don't know. Only time will tell. But if you know, if we do buy Ripple right now, then the and the price goes back up, and that lawsuit doesn't happen, then we're going to see a huge price increase on Ripple. This might be the best buying time for Ripple right now. It's saying right here that XRP's price has been in a free fall in the past few days amid revelations that the United States Securities and Exchange Commission was suing its parent company Ripple for issuing 1.3 billion unregistered security offerings. So yeah, that's pretty crazy, guys. From Dece they're saying from December 2013, from the start to the present, defendants sold over 14.6 billion units of the digital XRP in return for cash and consideration worth over 1.38 billion of U.S. dollars to fund Ripple's operations and enrich Larson and Garlinghouse, Brad Garlinghouse. So I mean, that's pretty crazy. Uh, Ripple CEO is urging investors and employees not to worry about the lawsuit, but stressed that the legal battle could take time to finalize. In the meantime, Ripple Net has very few has very few business operations in the U.S., which could theoretically allow the company to relocate overseas. Ripple has not indicated such plans, and they're a San Francisco-based company, guys. So I mean, if they relocate to the uh, you know somewhere overseas, like you know Dubai or somewhere with less restrictions, that could definitely help them out. And there was another piece of news I wanted to show you. Uh, U.S. regulators set new expectations for stable coins. And they kind of did this as things were coming out with Ripple. A group of leading U.S. financial regulators has released a new statement on stable coins. That's kind of like Libra, what Facebook was trying to do, and some of the other ones. One of the headlines, one of the topics for crypto regulation this year, stable coins were the main topic of the President Working Group in Financial Markets. They're saying that, let's see here, let's see. Depending on its design and other factors, a stablecoin may constitute a security commodity derivative subject to U.S. federal securities, commodity, or derivative laws. So that's kind of giving some more financial clarity. The group reached a productive balance, recognizing the valuable and important role of stablecoins in playing in our national global economies and to ensure financial tools do not contribute to crime or national insecurity. Pretty big news right there, guys. So we're seeing we're seeing more regulation happening. Um, there, you know, the, this this lawsuit going after Ripple, Bitcoin still staying dominant. You know, a lot we're seeing that Michael Sayar and a bit and Elon Musk talking about it, saying that there could hit this 100% appreciation per year. So what do you guys think? Do you guys think it'll stay 100% every year? Do you think we're gonna go up to you know 30k by Christmas? I made videos on that. And maybe. You know, the Michael Saylor is getting really bullish. He's saying it's going to be up to like four hundred thousand dollars for a Bitcoin. I think it's definitely possible. Four hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin, while these other coins like XRP go through lawsuits um, for their security, it's because they have like that parent company Ripple. You know, but the thing about Bitcoin is, guys, it's like there's only a certain number of Bitcoin that um, it's making all these people come in there. They're seeing all the benefits. That gold wasn't giving them, so that people, all these investors and mutual funds and insurance companies are now looking for long-term holds in Bitcoin where they can make so much money. Even if, even with the price volatility, Michael uh, Saylor is saying that that Bitcoin is going to stay at this mark, and it's um, it, we're now seeing a lot more like stability in in Bitcoin because of uh, all these investors coming in and the depreciating dollar. You know, the economic stimulus. You know, people are just the value there's they're just basically printing more and more cash in the US and it's getting a lot more attention to bitcoin from these investors that want to they want to uh, basically see dividends to like their people that are holding all these funds and portfolios so let me know what you guys think do you guys think that's uh the case do you guys like uh do you think ripple's going to survive do you think bitcoin is going to hit these all time highs and keep appreciating 100% every year if not 300 400% we could see like a hundred fifty thousand dollar Bitcoin, two hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin. Let me know in the comments. Thanks. I appreciate you guys watching.